All right, welcome back. One of Britain's best known TV newsmen is dominating headlines across the pond. The BBC's Hugh Edwards was taken off the air over claims that he paid a teenager for sexually explicit photos. Now he is getting mental health care while police say he did nothing illegal. We should also note that the BBC is one of CBS News's international partners. NPS Time is tracking the scandal for us and has the latest details. So high profile is Hugh Edwards, it was he who was tasked to inform Britain and the world the Queen had died. This is BBC News from London. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Tonight at 10, as anchor of the BBC's flagship evening news programme, Edwards has earned a reputation over the decades as a calm and steady voice at times of major crises. The future of the United Kingdom is uncertain. Now he's at the centre of his own. Last week, the Rupert Murdoch-owned Sun newspaper reported an unidentified BBC presenter had allegedly paid around $45,000 to a young person, now 20, for sexually explicit images starting from when he was 17. The crisis deepens at the BBC. The, corporate the allegations, which the young man has described as, quote, rubbish, triggered days of breathless coverage. A story so big, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak weighed in. I think it's important that the BBC conducts this investigation quickly and rigorously, given the concerning and serious nature of the allegations. Yesterday, Edward's wife confirmed in a statement from the now suspended BBC anchor that he was at the centre of the controversy, but did not comment on the claims, only that he checked into hospitals suffering from severe mental distress. London's Metropolitan Police says it's not considering any criminal charges against the 61-year-old, while the BBC said its internal corporate investigation would continue. Now, there's a huge amount of pressure on the Sun newspaper right now to explain why it published these allegations against Edwards now that the police have said nothing illegal here has happened, while the rest of Britain's media are really debating whether a well-known person's private life is in the public in interest and how much of a right to privacy one is entitled to, no matter how high profile they are. Emery. Yeah, you know, MTS, I got to tell you, when I first, when the story first broke, I thought, oh my gosh, because, you know, where's this going? But then when the police came out and said he did nothing illegal, I too was wondering why the story still had legs, as they say in the business. Yeah. What more do we know about the investigation's findings? Yeah, I mean, Emery, you weren't the only one. Uh, let, let me set the scene here for you a little bit. Here in Britain, this story has prompted nearly wall-to-wall -wall coverage in some parts of the British media, including the BBC. Uh, there's been so much breathless speculation about this story, even before yesterday when it was still a, quote, unidentified BBC journalist, which is how this story was framed uh, as it was initially reported by The Sun. But as we rightly report, uh, point out is that the police have come out and say they have found nothing criminal about what has happened. Happened. And that, of course, has opened up a huge amount of questions as to just how watertight this story was and why it was published, which we'll get to in a bit. But again, it speaks to a bigger issue here in Britain, which is what we were saying, which is here you have this high profile journalist who may have been engaged in behavior which some might, and this is the words of somebody described here in the British media, have the ick factor, trying to solicit images from somebody who is much younger than him, but nothing illegal has happened here. And again, it raises these questions as to just how much of a personal life is somebody in the public eye entitled to? Yeah, there's the, uh, there's the optics of it, even if, as the police say, it is not illegal, MTIs. Um, what else are we learning about Ed's or Edward's conduct uh, at the BBC? Yeah, well, since uh, obviously this uh, bombshell report, which came out on Thursday of last week, and it was a pretty bombshell report. I mean, we have to remember there were allegations that he was funding a drug habit, none of which mm. was proven, of course. But, you know, it, it really just sort of speaks to the salaciousness of this situation. But again, since then, other allegations have come out, uh, including uh, that a young person, uh, an adult, it has to be said, felt threatened by messages uh, that 
that uh, he received from Hugh Edwards uh, while they were chatting on a dating app. Mm. Uh, there's also allegations that he may have broken lockdown rules in order to meet somebody he's met on an app. Uh, and there are other allegations that he sent what's been described as, quote, creepy messages uh, to people on, on apps like Instagram. So all of which is to say that, yeah, there are probably questions about his conduct, and perhaps for the BBC there are questions about whether or not he may have violated some of their own uh, rules, if you will, in terms of how he can or how he should behave as a member of staff. But when it comes to the legality of what uh, Mr. Edwards is accused of, it would seem, at least according to the British police, police rather, no crime has been committed. And then there's this other element of his wife releasing a statement. I mean, mm -hmm. his wife essentially was the one that kind of revealed the name of the mystery yeah. broadcaster. You know, have we heard anything more from her? Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting bit of stagecraft, and maybe that is a cynical way of looking at it. But we have to remember that H Hugh Edwards is a huge figure in British media. He is the face of the BBC. As you saw in my report, he was the man who was tasked to announce to Britain and the world that the Queen had died. He is the face of the Olympics. He's the face of elections politics. He's the face of every big name story you can imagine. So for Britain, the man who anchors the 10 o'clock news on the BBC, the most watched news program to be involved in such a scandal, is pretty astounding. But what Hugh Edwards has also done throughout the years is talked very openly about his own struggles with severe depression. And in this statement that was released by his wife, who is also a journalist for a rival network, um, she talked about how the fact uh, he was now in hospital receiving treatment. Uh, and one would imagine that the reason she was releasing this statement uh, was because he is in hospital for what's been described as a severe mental health episode. Mm. Whatever the case, all of this again underlines the substantive point here, which is where is the line when it comes to people who have public facing jobs and their right to privacy? And very quickly, I do want to point out in the UK, the situation is very different here. We do not have the First Amendment here in the United Kingdom. What they do have are very stringent laws when it comes to defamation to protect an individual's reputation from harm. And that is a very uh, separate and unique thing. And there's many who are suggesting that Mr. Edwards, should he choose to, will be able to pursue uh, damages from the Sun newspaper based on what they reported in that initial article on Thursday. So this story is not going anywhere anytime soon. Right. MTS Tayeb, thank you so much. The Ramey. delicate details there and uh, important details to make sure that this is reported so well. The sourcing here uh, has to be uh, totally, totally airtight. Mm -hmm. MTS Tayeb, thank you again.